Is everybody able to be as evil as each other? I think, well, look, I think we all have the capacity for, for evil and we, we all have the capacity for extreme evil oh. um, and we all have the capacity for, for, for goodness as well, and, you know, one would hope. But we do our works. best to be, to, be, to be decent human beings yes, yeah. and, uh, and, you know, that would... Oh. But evil lurks very much under the surface. This, this veneer of socialisation we have is very, very thin, very, very a thin gossamer, is it not? I mean, you've only got to look at Kosovo uh, to appreciate that evil can break out uh, at the drop of a hat, so to speak. Absolutely. Uh, and is that the evil that, uh, that uh, not so much interests you, but that you dwell upon? Is that what causes this, uh, this melancholy? Um, my melancholy comes from other things. It uh, has nothing to do with, with, uh, with evil. No. I think that... I think that uh, we all have a melancholy side. I think that society actually has a problem with sadness. They don't, uh, they don't like sadness. Uh, they, they try to cure sadness. They, they have thera therapy to cure sadness. And I actually don't think that sadness is necessarily a bad thing. I think that it's, a, it's something that's an essential part of our character, particularly an artistic character. Yeah, well, certain cultures celebrate sadness. Uh, I, I notice at the moment you're living in Ireland. Well, certainly the Irish uh, love nothing more than a wake. They do. Uh, they're dancing in the streets when somebody dies. Uh, is that what you mean, a celebration of sadness? I think that they have, uh, they have an understanding of that side of, of, of their nature and are, and, are, and are happy to express it. You're an artist who's happy to talk about the muse. Uh, uh, the muse, you know, I take it in the artistic sense of visiting the artist and helping the artist with their work. Uh, you know, and, you, and you're quite protective of this thing that you describe as a muse. How, how does that operate? That was the nicest cigarette I've it's, ever had. It's <laughs> terrific, yes. <laughs> that I could actually have it on a TV program. And yes, yes. Well, you don't see smokes being smoked on the Des O'Connor show, for example. No. <laughs> but, but to answer your question, um, I should have forgotten what it was. It, it, was, <laughs> it was about the muse. The, the well, the, mu the, the muse to me is, some, is something that needs to be uh, looked after and honoured and I think that, that, uh, um, that your creative talents can abandon you if you, if, you, um, if you abuse them. Now have you had any experience of doing something which, you know, for want of a better term, the muse objected to? Or yeah, yeah, I have actually. There, there's one thing that, that haunts me to this day is that, that I, uh, I agreed to, to, uh, to write a song for the Batman film. and. Uh, Someone rang up and said, would you write a song for the Batman film? And I thought, my muse said, don't do it, don't do it, don't do it. Um, but I thought, I went ahead and did it and made an incredible amount of money and wrote the song in about, I don't know, 25 seconds or something like that. Yes. And uh, made a huge amount of money for doing it um, and because the, the record went platinum in, in America. Um, but I've always, I've always felt... Uh, that's always troubled me, actually. I always feel I have to pay for that in some way. I'm not quite sure how. Well, I, I notice it, as it may be dissimilar, I don't know, but Brett Whiteley always worried about uh, the muse leaving him. It was one of the great uh, uh, sources of distress in his life. Uh, is that a fear that you have, that uh, you can wake up one day and it's ex extinguished, whatever the wellspring might be? It, it used to be a fear. I used to live permanently... Uh, uh, I mean, I used to look at other, other rock musicians and see the, the inevitable thing that happens with them, yes. with so many of them. But, uh, but I, think that, um, I think that if you do the very things we were talking about before, if you look after, you look after this, you, you, you're with it. You're a talented person. There's no reason why, why it should ab abandon you. I think what a lot of people do is that they feel that they have to uh, remain young. And I think that yes. this is the, the great pitfall, particularly in what I'm doing, yes. is, is to kind of chase after youth. It's, yes. And ultimately, you're going you're to lose and, you, and everything's going to go horribly wrong. Whereas uh, certainly early, early music of yours was, seemed to me to be far more aggressive than the music is now. Is that a natural thing as one does uh, get older, as you grow into your age, that uh, melancholy may well replace anger? Yeah, I mean, I think that uh, the great Oscar Wilde said something about that. He said that you can't, uh, you can't receive uh, grace in a state of rebellion. And I would say that, that, that the creative process is, is a pursuit of grace in some way. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, I would, you know that, that's, that's what I would be trying to do. I, I noticed uh, is, there was a quote uh, in one of the uh, pop magazines uh, here in the United Kingdom 
that uh, described you as the negative of Engelbert Humperdinck. Uh, have you ever thought of maybe doing a <coughs> duet with uh, someone would... of Engelbert's ilk? Um, there would be people of his ilk that I, that I perhaps would, would consider Tom Jones, perhaps, who I've always been a fan of, but um, yes. I've, never, I've never liked Engelbert. No. I always thought he was kind of wet. Yes, uh, well, a bucket know. of water, really, with trousers. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> You're quite taken by Barry White's gear, though. I love you? Barry White. Yeah. Uh, Barry White's, he's got, he's got it. We well, just use, he uses yeah. sex, Barry White, doesn't he? He's a very, very sexy man, yeah. I think, I think he makes some of the sexiest music I've ever heard. Nick, we could talk all night, probably about the devil and the dark matter, uh, and probably will over a couple of rougher altar wines uh, upstairs later in the show. But for now, Planeteers, can you whack away at the fists and reduce them to a bloody pulp until they drop off as a way of thanking Nick Cage! <laughs>